Hi, I'm Matt. Everyone loves me. Previously on Unique Geese. Goodbye, puppet. Aww. Jack. What are you doing here? I have nowhere else to go, Peter. Is that where Day Shift at Freddy's 3 picks up? Is it the end of that ending? Hello there, geese. Yeah, so basically, I found this training tape secondhand, and I'm gonna open up a new Freddy's. But didn't we do all of that to shut Freddy's down? Yeah, but there's a lot of loose ends I still need to tie up, and a lot of souls that still need their happiest day. Well, I want to make sure we do what's right, so whatever it takes. Besides, have you seen those new Foxy models? I'd yeah for the <laughs> That you understand Ocean man by the sand Soaking up the thirst of the land Ocean man Why did they make- Why did they make Jack so scary looking? Why does he look like that? I don't like- I don't like him! I'm sorry, Jack looks scary all humanoid, bro. He's literally a corpse. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> What's happening? Why, oh. hello there! Future entrepreneur! Congratulations on purchasing the start your own Freddy Bam spend this pizza real Why is he selling kit. wait why is he 1993 edition Okay so this is several this is a while later company representative I am not a child murderer Good to know Freddy's is a chain of fast food joints that span the entire of America. At its prime, Freddy's had over 50 active locations, most of which would permanently shut down due to a suspicious number of toddlers going missing on our premises. How crazy is that? Oh, that was a good fart. Sure that was really glad juicy. I've had nothing to do with any of that. Yeah, for sure, Dave. You. Good sure. Me? A young visionary who bought the Freddy's merchandising kit for a hefty fee of $12.50. That, that's expensive. The first day of setting up a successful Freddy's pizza joint is to choose a suitable location. Okay. And not just any cardboard box will do. Small enough that mysterious giant skull I hate them. can't lay eggs in your restaurant. I hate them. Detected. I hate them. Trust me on that one. Secondly, you need at least two rooms. A room for dancing in, and a room for bleeding out in. Don't splurge on buying a location. Also, save yourself a headache and avoid carpet. You'll thank me later. Okay. Next, you need ingredients for your pizza. The nearest dumpster will do nicely. You want your pizza to have that distinctive Freddy's taste, don't you? Next, you'll need performers. Robots are expensive. So just buy a fat dog over 20 bucks. Yes, sir. Or, yeah. better yet, fish something out of the trash. Okay. Don't attempt to murder any kids that are buffer than you are. <laughs> Don't put the rabbit's face on a goddamn pizza. Taxation is theft. Don't pay taxes. Don't drop kid any screaming toddlers. And don't <laughs> the facts during what the fuck? Hours. That scared me. All I have for this oh my god. Goodbye. My it's heart. My home. heart jumped. And remember, you are the new face to Freddy. Bam, spend this pepperoni. Oh my god, that scared me. Why? Hello there. Future business owner. I have many questions. Why is Dave in charge of the franchise now? Wasn't like the entire reason we were doing all that stuff was to get it shut down? Okay, whatever. Welcome to your new Freddy's location. Like all Freddy's locations, it's probably a complete dump. Fair enough. What? Rest assured, with enough business savvy antics, you'll be able to afford running water in no time. Let's go! Freddy's issued camera panel should now be sent to your restaurant. Current layout, depressing, is it? Yeah, that's pretty sad. Most beginning Freddy's locations have at least four rooms, a dining area, and a safe room. Okay. This is your dining area. All right. It's looking spat. Look at that. It's looking all snazzy. It looks great. You are lucky. You've had enough money left over after buying the place to afford tables. What? What kind of lucky fellow would choose to start up at Freddy's location? A. 
Don't worry. With time, you can upgrade everything. Okay. From the floors to the walls to the muscle on the walls. I like that. Dream big. Think of better moss. Let's go. Okay, better moss. This is your safe room. Okay. It's an off camera room where employees can smoke, complain about you without getting fired, and put on horrendous mascot costumes. I have a, I, okay, there's a theory. I was laying in bed last night and I had a theory about this game. Okay, this is where I think the game direction could potentially go. So in the good ending of the last game, right, we essentially killed uh, Dave and he's going to be in Springtrap, right? But eventually, my guess is that he's probably going to die inside a spring trap. And from what I've gathered, the factory is where they take the bodies of dead employees and turn them into, like, mindless, brainwashed drones with phones for heads to start up new Freddy's locations, right? So, in theory, I think we're going to be going to the factory to save Dave and then going forward into the game like that. That's my theory. Spring boy suits are hard to come by these days. So, you're probably gonna be serving birthday cake in the bear one seat for a while. Joke's on you, Dave. I just I just stuck golden heady into an existing springlock body. Fred not go on trail premier. Soon enough, you can buy death crabs and then hire young adults who roll their ageless to die them. Okay. Groovy. Yes, very groovy. All right. Now, let's draw paperwork. Okay. I know all of it right now. Oh. So I'll put it in it and find it all later. Okay. Sounds good to me. Now, first things first. You have a fuck ton of big red letters at your disposal. What name are you gonna slap onto your restaurant? Choose a restaurant name. Oh, we don't actually get to pick it. So, Freddy Fazbender's Pizza, that's basic. Freddy's House of Pleasure? I don't know, if it was a Foxy location, I'd say yes. Freddo's Vile Pepperonery? Uncle Jack's Family Diner? Or Bear? Good choice, <laughs> I'm guessing. Now, we've also included several cut out Freddy's heads to go above the name of your pizza joint. Corporate didn't want me to throw in this bread bear cut out since we accidentally took it mid chunk while he had a kid in his mouth. Oh. But since I'm the only one here now, I put Fred Bear's head in the damn pile. My camera not so in full. Choose wisely. Which head is gonna go up above? Okay. Uh it can be Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, or Fredbear mid chomp. You just made a partially relevant choice. Awesome. With all of that out of the way, it's time to go outside, put up your tank, your bare head, and call this place open. Goodbye, and remember, you are the face of the Freddy Fazbear this pepperoni. Yay! Orange Maniac revives bear worshipping pizza cold. This is simply the worst possible timeline. <laughs> I already, I'm already loving this game, bro. Amazing, actual customers of, what's up with this kid right here? This kid looks high as shit. And this chick has a chunk missing out of her face, but okay. Good God, if you play your cards right, you'll be able to buy a table next month. Go get suited up and bring cake out to the kids. Oh God, here we go. Is that to like click the spring locks? Cake. Lucky for you, you stole a wedding cake three months ago. Ew, bruh. Cakes are too magical to go stale, right? Oh, man, that's good. If any kids get food poisoning, just respond to their parents with that. Yeah, great. Awesome. It's cake time. Cake time, chat. Woohoo. Hurry up with the cake already. Um, I can see why Dave like killing you little fucks. Okay, yeah, I think we're, we're going for the bad ending, bro. I, I love being evil in this game, bro. Yay! Yay! Oh, I'm getting a phone call. 
Hello, this is the Los Angeles Police Department. Oh, hey, coppers. Am I speaking to the owner of Bear? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's me. First of all, may we ask for your name, sir? My name's Jack. Should I just type Jack or should I like put his full name? What was his last name? Kennedy. Jack Kennedy. Jack, is it? You sound like a Jack. All right. We need to ask you another question. Have you heard anything about what happened outside your restaurant today? No, what Basically, happened? a child named Jacob Adams got abducted outside the New Freddy's location at around 5 p.m. No witnesses were close enough to fully make out what happened. Oh. And the reports that we've gotten so far are totally outlandish and paranormal. We know that you were inside when it happened, and we're just calling all nearby businesses out of courtesy. Please, be vigilant. Something is outside your restaurant, and it has already taken one child away. Make sure to lock up tight, and to keep a close eye out. Oh shit. Uh, I sure will. Thanks, officer. Good night. Jack. I understand they found out the name Jack Kennedy. Uh, it was in the last ending. Uh, in the game before. We were figuring out Kennedy. There we are! So it's in Los Angeles, but we're going up to a different location. Okay. Why, hello there, future restaurant owner. Look, I'm gonna level with you. I don't know what you're gonna hear these pigs in, but all I know, Afton Robotics has closed its doors, and no new robots are being made. What? All of that aside, why would you want to spend money on brand new robots when you're just gonna get children's blood and buffalo wing sauce all over them a month after purchase? Fair enough, Dave. Fair enough. What you should do is cut corners. Cutting corners at the cost of customer safety. Why, that's the American dream. Is this the day shift at Freddy's 2 location? So, it is what you need to do. Grab a phone book and look for the nearest abandoned Freddy's location. Most of them are abandoned, as of me recording this, so unless they are bulldozed or burned down, you've got easy pickets. Go to whatever location you can get to, find your way inside, and then take the most complete robot you can. Shine, those old things might be dangerous, but wanted. What? You'll save a fortune, and besides, Customers love those fucking things. Nothing beats Andy's nostalgia. Worry not, future restaurant owner. If anything goes wrong, you can always just relocate and change your name, right? After all, the kind of man buys the Freddy's location and uses their real name. Uh, might have made a mistake there. Anyway, that's it for this tape. Goodbye, and remember... You are the funky face the Freddy fans- Friday Night Pepper. Funkin! Just need, just need to say that to fill the quota to keep the FNF &F kids engaged. Boy, it sure is dark here. Well, it's time to get searching. I'm sure I'll find more here than I did last time. Last time. What would you like to do? Search to the north, south. If we're standing in the middle, north would be the stage, so you'd want to go north. If we're in the, if we're in the second location, if we're standing in the middle, north would be the stage. Yeah. What would you like to do? Enter the room behind the stage. Inspect Withered Freddy. Boy, Freddy sure has seen better days. We'll leave him be. It is Hotel California. It's cool that we're going back to this location. I'm trying to think where everything is. So south would be the party rooms and the arcades, so maybe Balloon Boys down there. West, that's gonna be like Funtime Foxy now that we've repaired Mangle in the second game. Or Toy Freddy is in the ball pit, apparently. Toy Freddy's in poor condition, it's missing a leg and an eye. Believe him be. South facing corridor has been blocked off by a pile of rubble from a collapsed wall. Has someone been here since I have last? This does sound sad. And it is kind of sad to see that the location we were at is in this state. Oh, that's Balloon Boy. Oh, God, no. Come on. 
Surely even you don't want a one-legged balloon boy. Um, we just came, this is east. If we go back west, I'll be in the middle. North, this will take us to the safe room, right? Maybe, no, yeah, yeah, safe room in this game. Inspect Fring Spring Freddy. Wow. And to think you once wore this thing for a living. Strangely enough, someone seems to have repaired it since you've last seen it. You know, I feel like it's kind of poetic. I feel like it's kind of poetic to take the spring suit. Let's hold a pole, all right? For old time's sake, we're getting our old friend back. Come back, Springlock Freddy. Saving an old robot increases your liability, right? Yeah. You decide to take Spring Freddy back with you. You're free to leave through the dining area. Or you can explore this location some more. Is there anything else we can do here? There's nothing else to do. Not really. Take Spring Freddy back. Hey, bud. I've got what I came for. It's time to go. Very well. What's done is done. You say goodbye to Freddy's Baker Bakersfield location for the last time and drag Spring Freddy through the window. Tomorrow is another day. Going to another location. Oh. Oh, this is, uh, this is Peter's house. Right? That was his name? Peter, right? Phone guy from the last game? Go to your workshop. It's Peter's house, but we're living with him. This is Peter and Caroline's room. You've kept this door locked since they passed away? What? They were so happy at the end. It may be late, but you know there's something you need to take care of first. You can, okay, so that's my bedroom. Our workshop has an arcade machine in it? She's up and running. It's time. This is your last chance to find their souls. Your last chance at redemption. Your last chance to- Not appropriate right now! Not appropriate right now! I'm getting emotional about the lost souls of dead children which were destined to save in someone- Fuck! <laughs> you have to go inside. So, wait, are we opening another Freddy's location to- save the souls of the final kids so in the true ending in the in the true ending i'm assuming we're gonna try to save whatever souls haven't made it out yet here we are wherever this is i guess you'll have to take a look around the flip side is a hostile place save often use experience or use x or escape to bring up the menu i'll save dave what are you doing in here, bro? Oh, sport. Is that... Is that you? Dave? You know, old sport. I never thought I'd see you here. Since you saw this end. Oh. What is this place? Where okay. am I? Time to spill the beans. Right now, we're standing in the realm known as the flip side. It's a place where dreams come to die, and lost souls eat pizza and stuff. Not funny. Okay, go Basically, on. Basically, you've left your timeline and come to a place outside of your own reality. The flip side. The flip side? The flip side, as it is currently known, is a place where lost souls retreat to. I had no idea that was possible. You didn't. You yiffed the damn facts about 12 times while it was haunted. Please tell me that you didn't actually think that a sentient child's mind was inside that fax while you were doing the do. That's... that's gross. What if the fox consented though? Of course I didn't actually think that. The flip side allows souls to remain in fact, even if a soul's vessel commits an atrocity in the name of vengeance. I don't get what you mean. Okay. Stuff of night gods in the suits. Buy another kids. Being called fairy brought a blue testicle by workers. That's too much for a child's mind to bear. Over time, souls tend to retreat to the flip side. And as a result, 
their vessels become more bearable, which is why I'm here. Okay, so whatever a soul is possessing something, it's not really possessing it most times, it's just in the flip side. I've been here for years, to be honest. Or, some form of me has, at least, years or whatever of advice, sportsy. Never try to put a soul back into a corpse. Especially not over and over again. Never ends well. If I ever somehow got my soul back, or if I ever somehow get my soul back, I'll keep that in mind. For the longest time, I've always wondered, why don't all ghosts do this? I know now. Years and years of clinging on to my own that body has caused my soul to rot and tear itself apart. The more reasonable side of me has retreated here. So the side that doesn't kill kids for fun? More or less. Okay, what about the other part of your soul? I have no clue where my feral side has got to do. It's still out there, I bet. It usually comes back. It always does. Okay, so... When we've been playing the game, we've been talking about Dave's bad side. But his good side's been in the flip side the entire time. Wait, are there any other alive people in here aside from us? No, other than us, there's only stray souls in me around here. But then again, I'm not exactly sure if I'm what you'd call alive. And who ain't neither. Actually, that's exactly why you're able to move between the flip side and reality. What do you mean? The flip side is a place for souls to physically move around. If a normal human ever tried to enter here through the glass of that arcade machine, their own soul would push back against the glass, like a reflection on the other end of a mirror. Without a soul, nothing can push you back through the glass. You can come and go as you please. Interesting. Okay. I haven't really kept up to date on what's going on in reality. I last checked that around the early 90s. Okay, so no, this... So his, no, his soul split after. When, when was, when was Dave Shifter Freddy's 2? Cause 87 was, was 87? 87 was Dave Shift 2. So if you checked out in the early 90s, his soul split in between the second game and this game. Grand. Okay. I could easily take it again the what reality Dave sees. Can you do that for me right now? Let me check. Okay, I see darkness, 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 kebab, darkness. Kebab. <laughs> okay, I think I'm eating a kebab in the dark. <laughs> Yay. I, I gathered. You no, know, it's actually quite fortunate that you decided to come here tonight. Something eerie has happened. What's that? Do you remember the real Fred Bear? Yeah. Of course I do. I swore my promise to that very good, bear. Good, good. Anyway, he went fucking at your wall. Oh, pardon? Well, being a non-literal entity, he spent quite a lot of time here with the lost souls. Watching reality, waiting for the right time to jump in and fight evil. What? He hasn't been seen here in quite a while. He left one day and never returned. I don't know what exactly went down in reality. What? Something bad clearly happened to the Fred Bear. I don't know what you're talking about, Dave. I I don't I don't know what you're talking about, Dave. I didn't do anything. And you weren't there watching when it happened either. This place has been extra screwed up since then. What have you been occupying yourself with lately? I've tuned about 335 guitars, made a few dozen pizzas, rugby tackled most of the robots at least once. I'm just really bored. To be honest, say, if you're going, perhaps I could join you. I could use a friend here. Maybe I could be that friend. I'd like that, sportsy. I'd like that a hell of a lot. Think about it. You have some kind of quest to go on. I'm born enough to do whatever painful task you set me to. It's a win-win situation. Besides, there's robots afoot. You're gonna want me around to help fight them off, right? Okay. 
Come on, Dave. Show me, show me the fuck around this godforsaken place. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. It'll be like a slumber party, except we're fighting seven foot tall animal robots and searching for dead people. You can now explore the flip side with Dave. Interact with props and scenery to hear some exclusive Dave commentary. Okay. So, so if I wanted to do the bad ending, I probably should have left without him because this is the good Dave. Maybe we should just do the good ending then. Let's just see what happens. I'm not gonna try to like Most force an of the ending. Most games that Freddy said was shit. To be frank, other than Brad Bear and Facts Pediatrics, utter garbage. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What is it? Can I pay you to stop talking about that Foxy strip club? Consider it done. I wanted to hear more about it, though. Ah, look who it is. The rabbit. <laughs> Seems so we had seen it with her face. I swear, one of these days, I want to scribble over the face of every rabbit poster in here. They just look so wrong, you know. I feel ya. I worked at three different locations that had faceless bonnies. Wait. I only remember seeing you at two locations where Bonnie was a no-face chump. Where was the trade? Of course you didn't see me. I was a night guard. I went by the name Jeremy Fitzgerald or something to that effect. Ah, right? Yep. Did I work there? Yeah. You killed five kids and moved on. I see. Yeah. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay. He's got commentary for I everything. Think this bro. one was a dunk, if I recall correctly. I don't really remember what cat, and I don't think anyone else does either. Okay, so our first fight. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Jeez. Okay. Um. Moves duo act. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Okay, hold on. Oh, I just raised his defenses. Oh, it was a miss? These guys have a lot of health, bro. Oh, Dave's not looking too hot. Uh, can we run? Can we heal? Okay, we auto heal in battle. Okay, I, see. I just remembered. I left my lunch bags in the supply closet. Okay. At some point, we should make our way over to the supply closet. And where would that be? Let's just keep moving to the right, and hope we'll eventually hit it. Sure. Is this a poster of you, Dave? Yeah. There's a drawing of me. Kids love drawing me. They were fascinated with me. Oh. Kids weren't fascinated with me, though. How many eggplant men have you seen in your lifetime? How many orange men have you seen in yours? To be fair, you were in a dumb bear suit most of the time. Fair enough. They still didn't pay me, pay me much attention when I was suited up, though. Well, you're just a scary fuck then. Okay, this is one Bonnie. I think we can handle this. We're gonna attack with Jack, and then I think we're gonna raise attack with Dave, maybe. Yeah. Damn! They hit hard. Jack Kennedy's squad fucking won. Let's go. Okay, we're gonna keep going right. Because he asked. Wait. Bro, we're in the bathroom now. Oh, I wonder what he has to say about Foxy. Look, sportsy, it's the facts. <laughs> <laughs> Something about that, that. I just imagine it like. <laughs> I imagine it like a little kid. It's like, or like you're at Disney World or something. That's a better example. You're at Disney World and a little kid's like, Mom, look, look, it's Mickey. It's like, no shit, kid. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time I... Yeah, yeah, I know. Pick up the facts, pick up the facts, Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon. They're no fun. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, there's a head. See, that's what I find strange. You'd think that with all of the faceless bodies that there should be more faceless body heads lying around. What? Nope. Only complete heads. The universe can be an unforgiving mistress. That she can. Sportsy. 
that she can. You even see a robot effortlessly pick up and fly an entire table while chasing a night god. I remember old Annual O'Hanlan, always drunk on a job, now bastard. Anyway, Bonnie fought the table and him, and crushed him flat. Damn. Made he rip and fuck. May he rip and fuck. Thank you. Ah, my lunch bags. Oh. oh, that reminds me. What were you looking for again? I'm looking for stray souls, Dave. Oh, right, Dad. Please tell me if you have any idea where to search next. Well, the security office is the most haunted room here by far. You can't walk past a room without some kind of spectacle trying to skew or pickle your organs. We should go check out the security office, see if anything's afoot. Okay, sounds like a plan, Dave. Coolio, let's get moving. So we was that the box uh, like from the FNAF game? Okay. It's office time. Sportsy. Okay, here we go. Nope, don't see anything. Let's wait for ten seconds or so. Maybe something paranormal will fade in. Ah! Then you have it, old sport. Something paranormal. Wow. That sure was easy to find. Like, it didn't jump scare us or anything. It's just like sitting there now. Hey, golden bear ghostly. Are you a dead child by any chance? You. Me. You. I remember your voice. My voice? Oh, good lord. You're one of mine, aren't you? <laughs> you're one of mine. The way he puts that. The way he puts that, he's like, oh, you're one of mine. <laughs> Yours? Well, yeah. Okay, fine. I may have snagged a few kids, but my pal Henry was even better at it than me. So, you admit it. And your friend, he also murders lost children. Oh, no, that's not Henry. You have both taken lives that weren't yours. And you must both pay the blood price. Oh, boy, here we go. Okay, okay. It's running, I promise. And then, I think Dave does not work on bosses. This is a boss though, right? I'm assuming this is a boss. I'll try it anyway. at the speed of I'm gonna make a out of you. You can't escape punishment for what you've done. I fully intend to do exactly that. Yay! Just stop fighting us, you ghostly golden testicle. You have not defeated me. I am a spirit. I will keep fighting until you both... Enough! I'm no child murderer. I think. That voice, that face. I know who you are. I saw you on the news. You saw a sports on the news. That would mean, wait, no, that that's impossible. Yes, he owns a Freddy's restaurant. I see how it is now. You clearly opened a Freddy's restaurant to lure kids there so your partner could kill them outside. Oh, sport. Since when do you own your own Freddy's restaurant? <laughs> wait a second. Oh my God. Your, is your name Jacob? How do you know my name? This is the kid that died outside our Dave, this child was killed outside my restaurant. Just before I entered the flip side. A police officer called me and told me about it right after work. Wait, that can't be right. That would mean... Jacob? 
You need to stop fighting us. I will avenge my own life. I will avenge lives of others who are also stuck here. Jacob. Killing me won't solve anything. I had nothing to do with what happened to you. But I remember his voice. Jacob, please. You aren't a golden bear. You're just a kid. You don't know what I've been through. What he did to me. Tell me what happened, Jacob. I'll try to make it better. I promise. I was six years old. It was a cool June evening around 5 p.m. I was on my way to meet my friends at the newly opened Freddy's location. Bear. I walked up to the doors of the restaurant and gazed up at the yellow bear head staring down at me from the doorway. Without warning, something slinked up behind me and pulled me into an alley. It smelled like death, and it clapped its hands around my throat. I struggled, but its grip on my neck was ironclad. My body remained in the alley until I was found later. My spirit left my dead body, and I wander around in the cold, lost. I tried to speak to those who were walking around me, but nobody could see me. I... I tried to change my form so people could see me. I tried to change my form to match the bear on your sign, but I couldn't. I didn't have the energy. I faded away and ended up here. This realm looks like a Freddy's restaurant, so I've heard. Not that I ever got to see the inside of a real Freddy's restaurant. Just like the happy day I never got, my happiest day. See? You are a child, Jacob. I've been here for what feels like an eternity. Time clearly doesn't work correctly here. I can no longer clearly remember my parents' faces. I miss them. Jacob, they definitely miss you too. Don't you want to see them again? Don't you want to move on? Wow, you subscribed. Enjoy the badge and emotes. Thanks for the sub, appreciate it. Yes, I do. Then it's time to stop fighting us, Jacob. Stop fighting. Sleep. You. You. I'm so alone, Jack Kennedy. Nobody else here remembers who they are, or what it's like to be a real alive kid. That's why I took the form of this ghostly yellow bear. I didn't want to end up like the others. A robot. Jacob. I'm sorry your childhood was cut tragically short. I'm sorry that you never got to see your friends that day. But this is no place for a child. It's time to stop fighting it. It's time to rest. Jack, thank you. Damn. So that's what from a lost soul feels like. Oh, it feels kind of nice. Yep. When he said, oh, it raises some concerns. Really? Like what? Well, about some of the stuff Henry told me. These kids are just like you, Willie. They don't have good homes or families like we do. Look at how happy they are here. Don't you want them to experience this forever? Henry told you that? I mean, yeah, he did. Do you think he was kinda wrong? That son of a... Dave. I can assure you. That little girl that he abduct abducted at the diner? Her name was D. She had a family, and that family loved her unconditionally. She may have had no parents, but sure, that's life. Her older brothers looked after her. They would have died for her. What do you say? 
Nothing. Nothing. That was his sister. That was Jack's sister. Sorry, I'm rambling. So, so now we have a name to the sister, who I think the sister, right, was in the puppet in Day Shift to Fridays 2, right? So now we have a name. So it's D, Peter, and Jack, who were the, the uh, D, Peter, and Jack were the family, and then their parents were out of the picture for some reason. So Peter and Jack were taking care of D when Henry abducted D. That's crazy. It's time for me to go. I have a rush. I can't run. believe you didn't tell me about that. Did you buy the Stuck Your Own Freddy's Kit 1993 edition? Bought it secondhand. Found it at a flea market. I see. Did you say that your restaurant was named Bear? That's bizarre. <laughs> like, just the word Bear. <laughs> you have issues. Sports. <laughs> Got a curiosity whose head the twist is up on the side. Fred Bears. Good choice. That one's my favorite. Everyone was long gone by the time I was making the kiddo. So I threw it in without permission. Company scandals be damned. I love that jaw be funk. Henry <laughs> really knew how to design a deadly lonely jaw. Oh, by the way, I'm just wanting it. Those tapes get a little strange later on. I might have lost my mind while recording those. Oh, God. You mean more than you already had? I should probably add. That kid said he recognized my voice. I'd be a little more concerned if I were you. Trust me. I am. No, you don't get it. The reasonable part of my soul is here. What? The feral side is still out there. If that kid recognized my voice. Reality Dave is still lurking around. And if he found your pizza place, he's probably trying to find you. I'll keep an eye out. Good, good. So, what's next for us? Well, I need to return to reality. I have a restaurant to run. Ah, uh, I... I guess I'll just stay here. Alone. Time doesn't exist here anyway, so who cares, right? Okay. I'll be back in a month's time. You will. Yep. Can I ask you something, Dave? Shoot, old sport. When I return, I want you to have a plan for us. God knows how many souls are trapped here. You think you can figure out a way for us to free more of them? I sure can, sportsy. Leave it to me. I'll know exactly what to do by the time you get back. Thank you, Dave. That's very useful. That's me. Useful, Dave. Okay. It's been fun, Dave. Catch you next month. Why, sportsy. Good luck running your new Freddy's joint. Here's my thing. I know we went into this and I said I was going to play it evil. Let's fuck up the bad Dave, dude. Let's fuck up the, the, the evil one. We gotta be on this guy's side. Fuck it, dude. Let's do the good ending. Goodbye, Dave. After that, bro, that shit was emotional. I'm not about to go evil after that, bro. Oh, the tapes are back. Woo! <laughs> it's Why, hello there. Welcome back to the Start Your Own Freddy Fast and this Pizza Kit. 1993 Yay. edition. Woo! You launch your own eating Oka pizza joint and you have somehow got an entire month without turning it down. Or flooding the place with our cheese. Freddy. <laughs> now, it's time to expand, baby. Business is hard. Taxes are late. Why is his Don't neck so long? Don't be fucking square, man. Go order Freddy's issue own guy from Afton Robotics. What's oh. Yeah, the black market. Own guys come in all shapes and sizes. Wait. They all have phones for heads though, before you ask. Every location has one. Even that one dog old location. All phone guys are made from 100% recycled spring what Freddy's employee. So don't worry about animal cruelty. Rest assured. Most of these men were probably dead before I got turned into living phone people. Everyone has their answering machine wiped repeatedly. 
so they won't be able to remember anything about their past lives. Mostly. Also, if you decide to loot away and murder any children, turn off the security cameras first, or at the very least, remember to crudely paste a picture of your janitor over yourself in the CCTV footage, so he gets mad for the crime instead of you. That's all for this tip. Remember to smile. You own this fucking place. So that confirms it right there. And when a Freddy's employee dies, their mind is wiped and their head's replaced with a phone. Would you like to skip phone use and drug? No, 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 I'm all right. Hello, Jack Kennedy. I'm a phone guy, model 1401, but you can call me Scott. Thanks for buying me, by the way. That warehouse was getting rather dusty. I feel like the I'm going to turn down... Like, when I can open the settings again, I'm going to turn down the music. No problem for 25 cents you were a bargain. They only charged you what? I, uh... I thought I was worth more than that. Uh... So basically, I'll do your taxes for you and stuff. Since most delivery companies allow you to order stuff over the phone nowadays, I can use my head to order more stock for us. Uh, what kind of stock can you order? Anything we need, from cough medicine to sawdust. So, I had to look over our paperwork. Did you... Did you attempt to burn all of the company forms? It was the will of Breadbear. He must consume. Hey, Dios mio. What's with the weirdly huge Freddy's employee destroying company documents? I swear. Every location I've worked at. I'll try not to burn any more documents. Okay. Since you must be, since you've made the remaining paperwork scarce, I'll have to run the legal side of your company. You do know that this is the only Freddy's location open, right? We're the only ones left. She goes squid on my words with her sandy cheeks. Okay. It's a responsibility to run the entirety of Faz Vendor Entertainment, and that includes the legal side of the company. That sounds really boring. I don't want to do that. Well, luckily, I'm here. I'll handle the lawsuits and disgruntled parents. Like always. First order of business. This place is tiny. How about we expand the place? I have a lot of cash shoved in the phone's receiver for some reason. We can use that to expand the restaurant. That's convenient. It sure is. So, I have just enough money to buy the grow your own hallway minutes just add water kit. I'll give this place a hallway, a bathroom, and an office. That can't possibly be a real kit. Isn't technology amazing? Well, you're the boss. Where do you want the hallway to go? Oh, uh, east or south? Let's go. Let's go to the right. All right, should take a second to grow the hallway. Wow, there we go. Hallway completed. Did you just grow an entire hallway? Yeah, it's to your right. I see you've already salvaged an older robot. By the way. Is using a 40-year-old springlock suit really wise? Eh, who cares, right? Any excuse to throw Golden Headward out? Don't throw Headward out! I already have! No! I forgot to mention, you'll get bonus customer satisfaction points if our robots match our restaurant's mascot. So, sticking a Spring Freddy head above our sign might be a good idea. Alright, let's, uh, that's our most pressing business out of the way. When you're ready to open up shop, walk outside through the door on your left and open this place up. Feel free to talk to me in any of the rooms before opening up and we can customize our restaurant to your liking, funds permitting. You have the option to randomize your pizzeria right now. This will completely, this will complete your pizza, this will complete your pizzeria layout randomly, but as a result, you won't be able to choose which rooms you'd like. You get a random selection instead. You'll lose out of a freebie dollar bonus. You also lose out of freebie dollar bonuses to go towards buying new stuff for your restaurant. Choose wisely. Manual build? Yeah, let's just ran. Let, let, let's go manual build. Wise choice. All right. Let's go. Let's go check out the new area. So we got the hallway. There's bathrooms up here. Just one bathroom. Fair enough. Fair enough. Here's the office. Is this the? Jeez. Maybe you should check the light bulb in the women's restroom. Looks kind of dark. What do you need, Jack? Um, can we talk about our bathroom situation? Well, right now we have separate bathrooms for boys and girls. 
If you want, we can convert the boys' bathroom into a unisex room and convert the girls' bathroom into a disabled restroom. Unisex bathrooms are all the rage these days. It'll totally boost customer satisfaction since it makes restaurants seem more progressive and hip with the times. Also, we'd be the first Friday's location to actually facilitate disabled people. But having most of our restaurant's customer base in one toilet will cause care outing, which will lower customer safety. Uh, should we unify them? Yeah, let's do it. Alrighty. I'll switch the stickers on the door before we open. I just wanted to, like, can we, like, turn the lights on in the disabled bathroom? Whatever, I guess not. You can't? That's crazy. What do you need, Jack? Um, let's talk stages. At the moment, we have no stage in the room. The cheapest stage is going to be $100. Yeah, sure, why not? Good investment. Yay, a stage. How's the restaurant looking right now? Well, our customer satisfaction rate is zero, our liability rate is 25, and our rate of employee danger is 10. Okay, um... Can I see the robot catalog? Here's the catalog. As you can see, normal robots aren't really sold these days. If you want to buy a performer, we'll have to go for something unconventional. God Red, do not buy. Candy Cadet? I want to buy a doggo! I'd never imagined that I'd be ordering doggos today at work. Yay! Well, there's your doggo. Yay! Are you ready to leave the tycoon and open up shop? Sure, dog. One month later. Is there something I needed to do for lore? Or... Oh my god, that's terrifying. Well, here we are. We're back at your very own Freddy Fazbear's Pizza or Fazbender's Pizza Joint. Sorry. It's the last day of the month. You better check up on how phony he's getting on. Alright, you could have hired people. Oh. What music would you like to play? Bakersfield track one, two, or three. Colorado one isn't available. Smoothish jazz? Let's go Bakersfield track one. Yes! Hey, boss! Welcome back to the new and exclusive for any Fazbender's Pizza. It's exclusive because all the other ones are on fire and gone moldy or have been converted into a Walmart. Please, this place is exclusive as your average STD. Hey, I'll have you know, I've done a good job keeping this place STD free. Giant mysterious scuttler free on the other hand. I don't know what it is about Freddy's location that attracts those things to be frank. Perhaps it's the damp dampness and our unique array of molds and fungi. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick rundown on exactly how the place is doing. Long story short, we're broke. Look at the data in the top right. 2023? Why is it 2023? Wasn't this like in the... Is that... Uh, so this is taking place like in modern... In like future time? Well, we're out of money. How? Sir... With all due respect, this place isn't making a profit, and our poor design choices are the main reason why. What? My, my poor design choices? Yes, sir. Your design choices. This place has no actual functioning robots. I mean, you brought back that hideous Spring Freddy suit, but it reeks. And since you haven't hired anyone to wear the bear suit, I've had to wear the suit at birthday parties. You realize how hard it is to fit a phone head instead of mascot costume? I know what a spring lock failure feels like, Jack. No. More. Spring lock schming locks. Who cares? We are out of money. I'll try to scrap some go dough together so we won't lose the restaurant. It also doesn't help that we're paying out employees. It doesn't help that we're paying out employee wa wages as well. We've got to be careful. Do you think you could help out today? Maybe lend a hand since you're here? Yeah, sure, I could guess I could help out for old time's sake. Great, great. That's actually quite reassuring. I'll go rev up the ovens. You, you do whatever you want to do. Time for bear? Should I do that? Is that good? Is that okay? Time for bear. I'm too stressed and much too tired to even be, begin to figure out what time for bear could possibly mean. You do you, Jack. Catch you later. Okay, uh, let's view the stage. Yo! This is the best restaurant ever! Uh, we're gonna pet him. This is the best restaurant ever, bro! Can you do any tricks? That was cool. Wink it, doggo. <laughs> T 
talk to Doggo. You are a dog, correct? <laughs> uh, all right, that'll be all then. That was actually fun. Oh, what, what was that? What is that thing? What is that thing? It's the nowhere man. Do you accept him as part of your restaurant? As part of your life? Yeah, sure, why the hell not? <laughs> oh! I guess he's a part of my restaurant now? Nice. Oh. We have a nice looking hallway. Hey, sir, can I have a quick word with you about something? Sure, what's up, employee? We got a problem. You know how you chose to merge the gendered bathrooms and convert the former women's restroom to a disabled bathroom? Yeah, well, customers have reported bizarre noises coming from that restroom. Frankly, I have absolutely no clue what could be up with that room. Ghosts and ghouls, a trap customer, and infestation. Either way, I'm not going in there. Uh, don't be a coward employee. I can't help it! It's in my programming. Don't die on the toilet. It's explicitly programmed into every AI on Earth. Come on, sir. Just give the disabled bathroom a peek when you have the time. Sure, why not? Superb! Report back to me here once you've surveyed the room. All right, time to see what could be possibly going on in here. It's gonna be dark, isn't it? Oh, oh God. Are those, are those pelicans? Storks and a lot of them. <laughs> what are they doing? Well, they seem to be docile enough. What do we do? Do not provoke them. Should we provoke them? We got to get them out of the restaurant. We can't have that. Hey, bird brains, get out of here. Shoo. Oh shit, oh shit, you've provoked them. Run. Sir, you've returned from the disabled restroom. So, see anything unusual in there? There's no way I'm talking about what's in there. But, sir, I'm concerned. What's in there that's so bad that you can't even do- Sir! Don't worry about what's in there. Because what's in there certainly isn't worrying about you. Well, all right then. Thanks for surveying the room for me. Here's $25 for not delegating the job to me. Glad to help, employee. Bye, sir, and thanks. See you on the flip side. Is he gonna be in the flip side now? Wait, was that a clue that like his actual soul is in the flip side? Let's mop the floor. We had to clean up after the pelican. Uh, let's summon, oh, call the factory? Let's call the factory. All right, time to call the factory. I'm, I mean, uh, hello, Afton Robotics, front desk. This is Scotty speaking. How can I help you today? Afton Robotics, is it still open? Why, yes, we are. These days with the closure of Freddy's, we don't make new robots. Our machines are simply too old to build new robots, but we still rent out a few old fan favorites to private birthday parties. Do you want to call about renting a robot, sir? Yeah, I want to rent out a robot for my business. Well, we're all sold out for the next six months, unfortunately. Sorry, those old models are really popular. I under Screw you, I want a robot. Don't talk to me that way, sir. I'm an employee of Freddy Fazbear, or Fazbear, Fazbender Entertainment. I don't have to take that from you. Well, guess what? I bought Fazbear Entertainment. Wait, is this Jack Kennedy? The one and only bitch, whoever you are, you're fired. Now nah, I'm just gonna hang up the phone. I'm not gonna be mean. I'm not gonna be mean. I do wanna call back though, to see if there's any other info I can get. Hey, sir, uh, what can I do for you? Tell me about yourself. Hmm, where to begin? Well, I'm an employee of yours, firstly. My head is a black rotary phone, in case you hadn't noticed. I hadn't, I'm an older model. My model is 1401. All phone guys have model numbers representing the location that they came from, and the number of workers that have been produced from that location. I had a long life with many tricks and turns. I served in a war like a few other phone guys. Wasn't ever married, never had kids. Side effect of dying relatively young, I guess. Um, tell me about your old location. 
Well, I've worked at quite a few locations. I started out in Location 1 in 73 as a day guard. Location 1 was in Hurricane, Utah, typical Freddy's joint. After five kids went missing there, I was transferred to Location 14, where uh, last, ca last location I worked at was Location 32, which I told you about my first day. Forklift wall, yeah. After that, I was put in warehouse duty, where I unloaded boxes from the factory. That's where I met Scotty, the, the, co the company's only phone, go phone gal that I know of. She's a real sweetheart, you know that? Sorry, I went off topic. Okay. Um, tell me some Freddy's lore. Freddy's lore, wow. Well, let me tell you, you've come to the right place. I've been working for the company since 1973. You could do worse than checking out the company's computer over there. Uh, old newsletters, logs, and such galore. FYI, most of the company it company is notes were written by yours truly. Since, it, since I took over doing that long ago. All right, lore, lore. Did you know that Freddy's name started out as Freddy Bear? We tossed it around a pun bunch of potential names for the character. Some idiot even suggested the name Freddy Fazbear. What a moron. Thanks to us, the Freddy Fazbender that we all know and love, our first ever location was built in a hur Hurricane Utah. Originally, we had three characters, Freddy Fazbender, Bonnie the Bunny, and Chica the Chicken. What did that say? It automatically, it automatically closed that one. It automatically closed that. Oh, duck. Okay. Business boomed at first, allowing us to come up with a new character on his own little stage. We ended up focusing, we ended up focus testing the character using all the manager's children. Somehow they ended up coming up with a flying walrus named Reginald, who lived in a dumpster and voted libertarian every election. And we just decided to pick a cool animal and make it a pirate. <laughs> Turned out to be a good decision. By the way, did you know that Pirate's Cove used to have cannons? But after what happened in Montana, I remember them. We read about that. We read about that. Yeah, never again. Uh, that'll be all, employee. All right, then. I'll be off, sir. But see you on the flip side. So now you want me to call the factory? Ask Scotty about your phone guy working with her. Hey, can I ask you a question, Scotty? Sure, sure. What's up? Have you ever worked with any other phone guys? Sure, of course. I've worked with a good few at this point, hon. Huh? Any particular model you have in mind? Well, I'm working with an older one right now. He's, uh, pretty stiff and formal. A black hey. receiver and hairy. Hairy? The one I'm talking about is model 14-1, I think. Why do you keep calling him Harry? Because, Sugar, that was his alive name. All Sonys have alive names. You think I was born a Scotty? My name was Rebecca. I was a hairstylist before I was a phone gal. We all had other lives before this. The length and quality of which varied. So, what was Harry's life like? Oh boy, you could barely remember it, huh? He's told me a good bit from after he became a phone guy. His responsibilities, having to write company logs after his whole boss died. Hell, he was even put in charge of tracking down a rogue phone guy, who was out searching for his lost kids, and ended up calling off the search out of pity alone. Harry was okay. Useful, but, well, he's a Generation 1 model. Meaning, he's a relic from the 1970s. Generation 1 models never remember much from before the phonification process, but Harry has demons, and those inner demons pursue him even now. Some things you just can't leave behind. Oh. Harry was a young man when he had his accident. Oh. I always found that particularly tragic. He fought in Vietnam, you know. I can only imagine how many death-defying situations he came out of in those jungles. Only to die in a bear suit. It's so ridiculous that I feel angry just thinking about it. I sure hope he doesn't feel the same way. It's honestly pretty hard to think about. He was still barely old enough to fend for himself, even after he got home from the war. Got a part-time job at the local Freddy's joint, ended up excelling at his career. He survived a war and lived a soldier's life. Order and routine came naturally to him. But then... Well, I needn't gossip. 
What? What happened? Well, you know, usually in a lot of cases, phone guys tend to remember their past lives and try to find their old families. But in this case, the opposite happened. When Harry went missing, well, his family came looking for him. They knew where he worked, after all. So, they went to his old place of work. Even with his ridiculous phone head, his mom recognized him instantly. Mother's intuition, I guess, ran over to him. Harry, we've been worried sick about you. Take that dumb phone head off and come home. He had no idea who they were. Oh. His mother looked into his eyes, or lack thereof, I suppose, and said his name over and over. He didn't recognize them. He couldn't recognize them. Harry's manager came in at that point. An older model. A guy named Abel. One of the original five managers. A real bastard of a boss. He was the second model of phone guy. And it shows. God, he was barely a human at all. When he died in a shooting, Harry took over writing company logs for Fazbender Entertainment. Which is why he ended up at the factory with me. Since it's basically Fazbender HQ. Sorry, off topic. Anyway, he kicked them off premises and had them removed by police for harassing his staff. Harry just stood there while his own mother was dragged off premises, calling out to him by name. Harry never really opened up much while I knew him, as close as we were. He broke down only once, and when he did, he told me that. That's heavy. How come he never told me any of this? I don't think he even really believes that he is Harry, but, well, I think it's a fantasy of his. The idea that someone cared enough to come look for him. I... I see. Thank you, Scotty. It's no problem. Do be kind to Harry, won't you? I wouldn't bring any of this up with him, but, well, just show him that you care, I guess. He needs to know that people, you know, care about him, and I... Sorry, I... I gotta go. Take care, sir. <laughs> hey, Harry! <laughs> I know your secret. You have a traumatized past. <laughs> hey, employee. Yes, sir? You know, I, uh... I called the factory, and... You spoke to Scotty? Yeah, and, uh, well, she told me some stuff about you. Said that your alive name was Harry. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Good one, Harry. Look, sir, I don't know what stories you've been told, but, well, all I know is Harry has a real ring to it, you know? Imagine introducing yourself as Model 1401, as if you're nothing but a machine. I mean, the Scott shtick works great, but so you need another phony using the same name. Look, we all have weird memories and fantasies about other lives and better things. But all I know is when people say Harry, my head turns instinctively. It doesn't turn for Scott. I hope that answered your question. Ooh, should I ask him about Abel? Should I ask him about Abel? Wasn't Abel, like, kind of abusive to him? Can you tell me about Abel? Abel. Scotty told you that name, didn't she? Well, yeah, she did. Why is there something odd about the name? Well, it is an uncommon name, yes, but that's not the source of my bewilderment. It's more that you know who Abel was. I mean, he died years ago. Most company personnel split off into two groups after that. People who didn't know Abel and therefore couldn't talk about him. People who knew him and as a result would have rather talked to anyone, talked about anyone but Abel. Most people didn't know his alive name since, you know, anyone who knew it was too afraid to ask. He, uh, he didn't like that.
Scotty mentioned that he was a bastard of a boss. Yeah, that's putting it lightly. You see, well, back in the beginning, the company was made up of six managers, one of whom was the owner, the company founder. After his accident, well, sorry, sir. Wait, okay, wait. Company founder. Who, who founded it? Because it's Dave and Henry who had Fazbear. They had, they had Fredbear. It wasn't Henry. Henry's not the founder because Henry and Dave were the founder of Fredbear and Fredbear was bought out. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not talking about him. Too painful. You'll have to find another phone who's up to that job. Let's just say he isn't with us anymore and he hasn't been for a very long time. The others, though, well, uh, I was one of the remaining five managers. Who are the other four? Hold on. A picture paints a thousand words, or so they say. <laughs> wait, on the right. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, that's, uh, that's the first one. What was his name? Shit. Shit. The one on the far right, that's, uh, not Scott. No, they're all Scott. Steven. That's Steven. Ah, here we are. Obviously, that's me. Okay, never mind. I lied. I was looking at the shape. That's Harry on the far right. Huh. The other four? Well, they're all Scott Cawthon, obviously. I know, I know. You want the alive names. The guy on the left was named Joe. He was someone I grew very close to. He got scrapped years ago after all the metal around his spinal cord rusted. I don't know if you've read The Joy of Creation by Dr. Henry Miller, but... Metal has a life force, and all life experiences pain. In his final weeks, Joe was burdened with a pain that, to this day, I can't even conceive of experiencing. Joe was a cynic, but, well, like Carolyn used to say, scratch the surf surface of a cynic, and you'll find disappointed idealist. I'm be burping and shit, bro. In case you're curious as to why phone guys now have swear words hardwired out of their coding, yeah, Joe is the sole reason why. Guy could have taught your average sailor a new swear or two. Abel never liked that. He never liked Joe that much. Of course, nobody liked Abel. You know, most generation phones can't remember anything about their past lives. Joe saved me, though. I was the first generation one model, and they wiped my memory completely. But he never gave up on me. I had no idea who he was, but he had years of memories worth of me. From the fresh-faced young veteran with a dodgy leg looking for sort of work I could get any sort of work I could get my hands on, to the day I got promoted, to the night we all stayed up drinking in the office on opening night for location 14, telling stories about our various stunts during our shifts. To this day, Joe came from the factory as a phone guy, and I wouldn't let go when I saw how genuinely hurt he looked. I remembered none of this, but well, Joe remembered. Joe remembered. Then, Terrence was the guy standing next to Joe. He was the last manager to be promoted before me. In fact, we worked in Location 6 together for a month or two. Terrence was always an optimist, and somehow, he never lost that as a phone guy. He was always happy to be at work, to see sunshine again, to speak to me, and to know that I was alive and well. One day, I asked him why he was so damn happy every day, and he asked me why he didn't seem nearly as down in the dumps as the rest of us. He replied, My programming won't allow it. He might as well said, I can't frown because I don't have a face. Terrence, well, many years ago, the elevator broke down in the factory while we were inside. Ever, ever the instigator, Terrence removed the emergency panel and decided to climb up the control room on the top floor so he can enable the elevator's manual override. Sure enough, the elevator rebooted and weirded to life while Terrence was still on top of it. We rose to the top floor before Terrence had time to get back inside. What well, we found Terrence on the top floor and of the roof of the elevator shaft. I don't know if we could have brought him back, but frankly, I wouldn't want to be brought back if I were him. Damn. Not like that. The guy standing next to me to my left was Everett. 
If you think I'm stiff, you should have seen him. Guy wore a suit long before he became a phony, from what the others told me. I remember the owner had a cookout that summer and invited us. The dress code was summer casual. Everett turned up dead last, and surely enough, he was decked out in formal wear. Joe stood, at, stood him up at the gate. What do you call that? Joe asked. Everett and Joe clearly had different opinions on what casual meant. Joe cried out, You're wearing a full set, full out suit to a barbecue. That's not casual wear. To which Everett replied, Nonsense. I'm wearing my waistcoat. I'd never seen Joe belly laugh before that. Everett was a kind soul. Perhaps a little too gentle for his job. Long story short, he tried to clean a dead night guard's remains up, but... Well, if you've seen any nature documentaries, you should know that there's a food chain. And that guy's at the bottom of the food... And the guy, and that the guys at the bottom of the food chain should wait till the predator is clear before touching what they've been eating. Everett's failure is bad enough, so picture the amount of stitching he needed to get his innards in his torso. Well, Freddy tore each and every one of those stitches out. And gravity took the rest of the job. Holy shit. What about Abel? Well, here's the thing. Abel wasn't the second phone guy. Joe was the second, then Terrence, then Everett, then me. We all suffered various accidents, all springlock failures, I believe. Of course, once Abel realized what springlock suits did to people while they malfunctioned, he decided that he'd simply never wear one. He gave Joe that job once he became the company boss. And after Joe's accident, Terrence got the job. And after Terrence's accident, then became Everett, which Joe wasn't too thrilled about. Then, Everett's accident... Then it was my turn, and sure enough, I don't really know what happened next. I have a few pieces of broken memories, mostly screaming, someone clutching my chest, probably Joe, and he never admitted that it was him, but if it was anyone, it would have been Joe. I remember nothing after that. Abel had taken me to the factory. Joe accompanied me on the way, but he wouldn't tell me anything from when I left Freddy's to after the process had been completed. Each of us were a work in progress. A learning experience. A beta test. Joe was the model that taught Abel to hardwire swears out of the phone guy AI. Terrence was the model that taught Abel to strip some of the optimism out of the AI. Everett was the model that taught Abel to strip just a smidgen of the stiffness out of the AI. Abel used their personalities as test modules for the AI. But, of course, Abel hated that others kept contacting their families. Felt they were less focused on their hard work that way. So, he reworked the AI. Called it Generation 1. Decided to strip the old memories out and replace them with what the company wanted me to remember. All of the managers were furious. I know it may seem, I know it may seem like an old fart, but... Well, I was the last of the five. The youngest of a group. I don't think anyone took it as hard as Joe. All of the conversations we had, the memories we shared... My old family, my old life, gone. And while I may not have remembered, Joe remembered. We all had a feeling deep down what Joe wanted. The company had broken me and he wanted justice. Because I, I didn't, or rather couldn't, Joe never told me what happened next. But one night, after we've had a few drinks, Terrence and Everett spilled the beans. Basically, Everett, Terrence, and Joe ganged up on Abel when he got to the factory one day, dragged him in the production room and closed the door behind them to the room that contained the machine. Joe told him that all the other company veterans had become phone guys and that it was time for him to pay his dues since they all knew he was going to avoid it for the rest of his life. I told him it told him that it was his turn to get it told them that it was his turn to get his skull shoved into a rotary phone. Joe brandished a phone, said he picked it itself, told Abel, Jesus, and told Abel that it'd be his new head. Of course, Abel didn't take it sitting down. Oh no, my skull, my skull won't fit inside that thing, it's too much too thin. Joe interrupted, don't you worry, Abel. Joe locked the door. We'll make it fit. I don't feel bad for Abel. You live by the sword, you die by the sword, or so they say. I always felt bad for Joe, though. You know, imagine a lot of people would presume he, that he, I felt cheated with what happened to me, but I don't. Really. I don't have many memories of my past life, sir. What Joe told me, 
Only what Joe told me. I don't doubt a word of what he said, but, well, Harry was the product, product, product uh, Jesus, I am having a hard time reading through all this. Well, Harry was at, was the product of his experiences, his memories. And all that was stripped away. By and large, I have no clue what I'm missing. And without my memories, I don't know for sure what this company has taken away from me. It was bad enough for Joe knowing the company had taken what the company had taken from him. And then seeing the company take everything away from me, he had the burden of awareness. I don't remember my past life, but Joe sure did. And every time he thought about the memories we shared and the life I lost out on, all he saw was red. Joe remembered. <laughs> sorry, I've been rambling for a long time. I... I'm sorry, sir. I'll get back to work, pronto. I'll see you on the flip side, sir. God damn! God damn, that was a lot of... That was a lot. Well, well, well. 6 p.m. So, let's have it. Wh what? Why is the first option unzips pants? Why is that the first option? This guy just went on a whole rant about how his life is a lie and everything that was surrounding him was destroyed and deleted and that he has this tragic past. And the first thing I do is, oh, it's 5 p.m. Have what exactly? How much dough you made from customers today, of course. You did stick around today to help me raise money for the restaurant, so how much have you made? I made $472. You made $472? Hey, that's not bad. It's actually a good thing you decided to stop by and help me today then. Thank you. Don't mention it, employee. Combined with your 400, we now have $722. Okay, here, sir. Here's what we made today minus the company deductions. Well, that's it for today. I'll see you on the flip side, sir. Today was an all right first day. You helped your employee the day, work the day shift and earned a considerable amount of money for your efforts. Today you brought back, brought brought you right back to your glory days, to those late afternoons bent over in a sweaty bear suit, to your time with Dave. Putting nostalgia aside, today wasn't large of a failure as it could have been. Phone guy leaves the restaurant. You decide it's time to lock up. You leave through the window and say goodnight to Freddy's. Tomorrow is another day. Damn! Holy shit! My brain, bro. My brain do be fried. the Arizona wait Utah location Utah location I don't think we've been to this one before finally you've returned there's no company tapes left to guide you through the remaining duties and responsibilities you're completely alone here at least you hope you are Eh, it's time to get searching those robots aren't going to salvage themselves yeah so this does look like FNAF 1 yeah this is like FNAF 1 not day shift to Freddy's one what would you like to do it looks like there's a Bonnie and... The stage area has been sorely tainted by time. A thick layer of grime covers anything that was once bright and pristine. Several pieces of Bonnie are scattered on the stage. Finally, an incarnation of Bonnie with the face, and yet no torso, no torso tragic. Freddy seems relatively intact, missing limbs aside. So we can salvage Freddy, enter the security office. Yeah. So this is the fat FNAF 1 location. Uh, but Day Shifted Freddy's never took place in this first location. So, apparently we did work here. Yeah, yeah, it said that Jack was Jeremy, so. Okay, so we can bring back Foxy, apparently. Good lord, how repulsive. You couldn't possibly want this moldy-ass chicken inside your restaurant. Salvage the moldy bird waifu. I'm gonna leave her be. All right, get your votes in. One in chat for Freddy, two in chat for Foxy. I'm gonna go piss real quick. Y'all really wanted Foxy bad, bro. <laughs> Y'all really wanted Foxy. Leave the pizza and take foxy with you what's done is done you say goodbye to the freddy's hurricane location for the last time and leave for the door since this place is windowless for whatever reason <laughs> very nice very nice wait the door is locked we went in the office we went in the office earlier that's impossible it's the same door you used to get inside oh oh no Oh God, who's here? Why, hello there, old friend. Oh How shit. Turn around? 
Oh shit. Oh shit. I knew you'd come back. I knew I could find you. Sportsy, I. <laughs> Dave? I've seen better days. Sportsy. Come on, closer, old sport. It's been so long, and my eyes haven't been so hot. These past few decades. I tell maggots fucking love human eyeballs. Who would have known? They seem to be crazy about me in general. I like me. Dave, what are you doing here? This is my home. Sportsy. It's where I died for the last time. It's my tool and my factual stand. It's where you died for the last time. So he died again after Day Shift at Freddy's 2. Don't mind the facts. You can't steal food anymore. Six I tore up his lamp. What happened to you? You look... Whoa. I know. I don't look half bad for a damn my Nine. I waited for so long to see you again. I waited here for you for over 30 years. They seem to be in a dark from over 30 years ago. Thought they could just do it up their problems. What? Someone tore down the flags and took me with them to a cheesy horror attraction. Oh. It was an okay hit for a while. Candy props, we did it pizza. What? One thing was missing. You. Every night, I searched the halls at that maze, looking for you. Being led around by the asshole slant of that plastic balloon crescent. I thought you had to come back eventually, right? You always come back. What? You didn't? Eventually, the place caught on fire for no fucking reason and burnt down. They sold pieces away at an auction, but couldn't find a home for me. How familiar. So, I found my home. I spent 30 years in that safe room, without a speck of light in the end. I thought, Sportsy would have busted me out by now. He must have finally kicked the bucket for good. But then, what do I read in the paper? Oh, wow. shit. You subscribed. Enjoy the badge and emotes. Yo, Green, thank you so much, bro. I appreciate it. Appreciate you doing that conversion, man. The new Freddy Fast End is now open full business. Oh shit. It had to be you. You had come back and called me to you. You always come back. I knew you wouldn't leave me. Let's go home. Sports. I I own a restaurant now. I can't take you home. That's no problem. Sports. Take me back with you. I can't help you run a show. I bodies. He kept back. See, I'm useful. Not in this run, Dave. Just like old times. Take me with you. You've become a monster, Dave. Don't say that, old sport. I'm still a person. I just look different now. Is all. So he can salvage or he can run as fast as our legs can carry us. Come back. So next time, next run we do, like if that'll probably be in a different stream, we'll probably do this again sometime or like it'll be a different video if you're watching on YouTube, probably we'll do this again, but we'll salvage him there. And I'm assuming we'll like use our restaurant to kill more kids and end up in Vegas or something again. But we're going to do a good ending here. We're going to do the right thing. This is Dave's evil side. There's someone in our window. Is that is that Dave trap in our window? He followed you home again. Let's go talk to the good Dave and get this figured out real quick. This sequence reminds me of Deltarune. Like heavy, like going into the, the dark world or whatever. I have to go inside. Sportsy, you came back. Thank God. He's so nice and happy. Like this is his good side that's in here. And it made, he's like, Sportsy, you came back. I was wondering you'd leave and 
It's fantastic to see you again. Likewise, Dave. So, it's been a month. Do you recall what I asked you to do for me? Oh, don't worry, Sportsy. I didn't forget. I found us a real good lead. A Spectre lead, if you will. Oh. Uh oh? <laughs> yeah, I ended up remembering something quite interesting. My brain and this game are slowly turning into one. We're slowly meshing. I'm like predicting what they're gonna say you ahead of time. remember that horrifying fucking puppet that Freddy Fazbend is kept in that damn music box, right? Yeah, that was D and we let her go, right? Of course I do. Why? Well, that puppet used to visit a lot. Sergeant full lost or damned souls. I thought D moved on. Balls. It came from another deeper part of the flip side. Wait, there's more of this place? You didn't think that this was it, did you? This place only covers like three old Freddy's locations. The flip side, much like the surface of the earth, or an onion, is layered. The deeper you go. Well, I tend to stay as close to reality as I can for a reason. It's been so long since I've seen that puppet, or ventured beyond this part of the flip side. Is there a way we could get there? Shine, just step into the portal. What portal? Why, that one of course, old sport. Wait, Dave can open up pur purple portals too? I'm liking Dave. I hate this fucking place so goddamn much. If you want to find that puppet faced bastard, this is the only way. The only way, old sport. Alright then. Let's do this. Ladies first, sportsy. Alright. <laughs>